As I explained in my last video, everything that goes against the leftist agenda is a threat against democracy, including democracy itself, even though we're a constitutional republic. The link to that video is down below. However, when that scare tactic fails to work, activists haphazardly toss out the term fascism like a verbal hand grenade in efforts to scatter their opponents and build a narrative against them. Since a large portion of people using that particular term really have no clue what it truly means, let's dissect it and see where the real threats are coming from in our country. <laughs> Rosie the Riveter here, dropping more truth bombs to destroy fake news and propaganda. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get new videos when they are uploaded. Now, let's get into today's riveting topic. By definition, fascism is a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power. forcibly suppressing opposition and criticism, regimenting all industry, commerce, etc., and emphasizing an aggressive nationalism and often racism. You got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Many of us did not want Obama as president in 2008, but when it happened, we stood back and said, okay, now that he's elected, let's see how he governs. That's true tolerance in what a republic does. However, when Trump won, accusations of Russian collusion dominated the media immediately, and it was pushed by Representative Adam Schiff for over two years. There were even calls from the media in Hollywood for Trump's impeachment before he was even sworn in, which is fascinating because up until his announcement, Hollywood and the media loved Trump. What did you learn, Mickey? I learned that Donald Trump, again, <sighs> He's a nice guy. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. And he gave a wonderful donation to the Global Medical Relief Fund. My daughter's having a fundraiser. Yep. She worked there. Thank you. Even today, Hillary still insists he was an illegitimate president, despite the revelation that she was the one that created and pushed the Russian collusion lie. Yet it's the Trump supporters that are the ones that are threatened with indictments for daring to even suggest possible election fraud in 2020. Following Trump's election, several individuals ran their campaigns on specifically targeting Trump. Immediately upon being sworn in in 2019, Soros-backed squad member Rashid Tlaib proudly declared, Bullies don't win. And I said, baby, they don't. Because we're going to go in there and we're going to impeach the mother <laughs> Soros-backed candidate New York Attorney General Letitia James campaigned on getting Trump. My soul right now is Trump. Will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass. I look forward to going into the office of Attorney General every day, suing him, and then going home. He said, I know my name personally. Soros-backed New York District Attorney Alvin Braggs also campaigned on indicting Trump, which he accomplished by twisting laws so as to somehow come up with federal a federal charge while ignoring the firestorm of crime infesting his city. The Post-Millennial reported, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg has charged Trump with the felony counts of this usually misdemeanor charge. Bragg said that there was a secondary crime in which Trump was planning to engage after the alleged records falsification. Bragg has refused to disclose what that second alleged crime was. Correct me if I'm wrong, America, but I thought we were innocent until proven guilty, 
and using government offices to promise to investigate every aspect of a person's business and life without any indication of a crime first is called a witch hunt. Likewise, going after someone for planning to engage in a crime seems like full-blown police state actions. Is it me, or does it feel like there is a well-coordinated attack against Trump and the right going on? Democrats have told us countless times the seriousness of the charge is all they need to take action. But is it true? As I exposed in a previous video, whistleblowers are only heroes in the left's eyes when they're attacking their opponent. They apparently really don't care about exposing corruption. I'll let you decide why. Just look at what they are doing with Hunter Biden and all the evidence coming out about him and how Joe is also involved as well as the corruption being exposed within the FBI and the DOJ. Look over here. There's UFOs. No, wait a minute. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine needs our help. We need to send them more money. Ignore what the documents are are proving about Biden's longstanding corruption. Trump is the fascist we have to worry about. Then there's Jack Smith, the hand-picked DOJ prosecutor who is a vehement Trump hater, and has a horrible record of twisting, manipulating, and falsifying laws to get convictions, including one case that was so egregious, the Supreme Court overturned it 8-0. to zero. I'll let you decide why you think the DOJ picked him. In July of 2016, FBI Director James Comey admitted Hillary Clinton committed federal crimes as Secretary of State, before making excuses for her and then saying, Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. However, when crowds at Trump rallies chanted, Lock her up! The media vilified Trump and his supporters for even suggesting going after a political opponent. Even though Trump made the case against Hillary with evidence from Comey himself, Trump never moved forward with any of it after becoming president. Yet the media still called him a dictator because he wanted to. On the other hand, they have cheered as the Biden DOJ has looked into every nook and cranny of Trump's life only to indict him on a very flimsy and very questionable classified documents case which Smith obtained by withholding evidence from the grand jury. Interestingly enough, on the same charges, Comey and the DOJ declined to level against Hillary Clinton. Other presidents have had documents. Biden and Pence both have documents. But only Trump has been charged with the DOJ. The media, Hollywood, and the left celebrate as Trump is indicted, but As the truth is being revealed about Hunter and Joe Biden, all they can do is cry crocodile tears and fawn over how Biden loves his son. With reports Smith is preparing more indictments of Trump in regards to January 6th in the 2020 election, probably by withholding more information from the grand jury, I'm anticipating those will occur as more damning information drops about Joe and Hunter Biden so as to dominate the media and cover up the Biden's corruption again. This is what happens in third world banana republics, folks. Not the freest country in the world. Biden said he wanted his administration to be transparent. Can you get any more transparent than obviously covering up your family's crimes while using federal law enforcement to go after your opponent? Despite the media trying to garner sympathy for Joe regarding Hunter, Democrat voters are seeing the truth. They're living in a Biden America, and they want another choice. Many of them are looking at Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Democracy, right? So how has the DNC responded? Nope. We've declared Biden the candidate, so we will not have any primary debates. Legacy news and social media outlets have jumped on board, too, censoring and ignoring Kennedy. It's so bad. The Democrats tried to shut down his testimony at the weaponization hearing. Regardless, 
he is gaining a following as people are abandoning legacy news and seeking him out on alternative media. Biden has sent billions, that's with a B, billions of our tax dollars to Ukraine under the guise that we are fighting for their democracy. But recently, Zelensky announced there will not be an election until after the war is over. So who cares if the people want a new leader who might be willing to make a peace deal with Russia? He's going to keep control until he decides the war is over. Seems like our billions have bought a dictatorship, not a democracy. Seeing where the Biden administration is heading, It is reasonable to wonder if the same dictatorial action is coming to America in 2024. Remember, they accused Trump of trying to stop the 2020 elections to stay in power, and they seem to be doing a lot of other dictatorial actions they accused Trump of trying to do. Just saying. Taking all the whistleblowers that are coming forward, Coupling that with the Durham report, which showed massive corruption within the FBI and the DOJ lying to get Trump while dismissing obvious crimes of Hillary Clinton, as well as numerous other examples of opposition targeting, there is no doubt we have a major problem in our federal law enforcement agencies, primarily at the top levels. When your federal agencies are run with the goal of getting their political opponents, then you are living in a fascist government. So what do you do when our top government agencies charged with enforcing the law are corrupt? Who's going to police the police in this case? Do you honestly think the DOJ and the FBI are going to investigate the whistleblower claims against their organizations or do anything about the retaliation those whistleblowers experienced for coming forward? Well, our founding fathers saw this coming and built in a safeguard in our Constitution for that. Do you know the president has the authority to use military for certain domestic purposes? We saw this in the 1950s and the 1960s, as schools were desegregated, and again in 1992 during the Los Angeles riots. Was this safeguard the motivation behind President Donald Trump's unprecedented move during his inauguration? Today's ceremony, however, has very special meaning, because today we are not merely transferring power from one administration to another or from one party to another. But we are transferring power from Washington, D.C., and giving it back to you, the people. For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government, while the people have borne the cost. Not only did Trump declare he was giving power back to the people, which, for the record, is the complete opposite of fascism, did you notice who was behind him at the moment? Among the military behind Trump were soldiers representing military intelligence and JAG, or Judge Advocate General, the law enforcement arm of the military. If it is discovered that our federal law enforcement agencies have been completely corrupted at the top, what can the country do? With the constitutional safeguard, the commander-in-chief has the power to use the military to enforce domestic law, especially in the state and federal governments are not doing so to the detriment of the citizens. Like indicting peaceful conservative MAGA protesters while paying out Antifa and Black Lives Matter rioters, or endless witch hunts against Trump while covering up all the blaring evidence against the Bidens. This seems a little coordinated too, doesn't it? In June of 2020, Adam Schiff proposed a law to prevent the 
so-called misuse of military and domestic law enforcement. Why would Schiff, out of the blue, introduce such a bill? Why would he be concerned about the military enforcing domestic law, especially right in the middle of the 2020 riots, where liberal mayors and governors watch their cities burn? In fact, Prosecutors not only dismissed vandalizing and criminal charges committed during those riots while you were forced to stay locked up in your home, cities were releasing convicted violent criminals back on the streets who committed even more crimes. Trump has been saying when he is reelected, he will decimate the deep state. Is this why Schiff proposed his law? Is this why they are doing everything they can to keep him out of office? Many reasonably argue that the military is corrupted too and that safeguard is not an option anymore. There is justifiable evidence for that viewpoint. However, there is other evidence that there are still good, solid people in the military and that military intervention is the only way to clean this all up. Time will tell which path our country takes. Those of us of faith realize no matter what happens, God is in control. What an incredible peace that brings. He brought the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. He returned them to Jerusalem after the exile in Babylon. He used Samson to judge and destroy the Philistines, and he used Esther to save the Israelites from annihilation. With both Samson and Esther, God took the actions of those planning to destroy his people and boomeranged those actions back onto the perpetrators. Will he do it again? Time will tell. But whatever happens, God wins. I'm Rosie the Riveter, and that's my two cents. But what do you think? Leave your comments down below. And if you enjoy my content, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. You can find all my videos and my blog, Liberating Letters, at thefactspaper.com. You can also start your own research on the Facts Paper by exploring the thousands of links to articles I have, including those noted in my videos. Sharing the truth, fake news propagandists won't. Investigate and discover the truth for yourself. (laughs) 